the book of Genesis 37, 1 to 11. And I want to appreciate my dad and my parents in absentia for giving me this opportunity just to share in this altar. And I know you will be blessed. Are you ready for a blessing? Open with me Genesis 37, 1 to 11. Is it up there? And we read. Now Jacob dwelt in the land where his father was a stranger, in the land of Canaan. This is the history of Joseph being 17 years old. Not that being 17 years old was feeding the flock with his brothers. And the lad was with the sons of Bilhah and the sons of Zilpah, his father's wives. And Joseph brought a bad report of them to his father. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was a son of his old age. Also he made him a tunic of many colors. But when his brothers saw that their father loved him more, that all but when sorry, but when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brothers, they hated him and could not speak peaceably of him. Now Joseph had a dream, and he told it to his brothers, and they hated him even the more. I want to read that again. Now Joseph had a dream, and he told it to his brothers, and they hated him even more. So he said to them, please bear this dream. Please hear this dream which I have dreamt. There were binding, binding sheaves in the field. Then behold, my sheaf arose and also stood upright. And indeed, your sheaves stood all around and bowed down to my sheaf. And his brothers said to him, shall you indeed reign over us? Or shall you indeed have dominion over us? So they hated him even the more for his dreams and for his words. Then he dreamt still another dream and told it to his brothers and said, Look, I have dreamt another dream. And this time the sun, the moon, and the eleven stars bow down to me. So he told it to his father and his brothers. And his father rebuked him and said to him, What is this dream that you have dreamt? Shall your mother... And I and your brothers indeed come to bow down to the earth before you. And his brothers en envied him, but his father kept the matter in mind. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we want to say thank you for the reading of your word. May you use me even as I share your word. May I be just but a mouthpiece to declare your word and your oracles. May you bless us and may you be with us. For we pray, trusting and believing in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And the church said, Amen. you may welcome to your seats. Today I want to share with us a sermon that I have titled. Sorry, just give me a minute. I want to share with us something that I have called preparing for your blessing. Preparing or journey to your blessing. Let me take that again. Journey to your blessing. Journey to your blessing. For those who are sophisticated, there are those who like complicated topics, you can also use this one. Managing your leash season. Managing your leash season. Leash is L-E-A-S-H. Managing your leash season. So I'd want just to recap something that dad had shared with us a couple of Sundays ago. I believe it is three Sundays ago. To do with the wisdom of blessings. Do you remember that sermon? The wisdom of blessings. And here dad shared with us, I just want to Take a few minutes just to walk us through five blessings that dad taught us about. That is the blessing of Joseph. Number one, he was blessed with the blessings of heaven. 
And dad went further to explain that these were the heavenly dreams and the visions. And the dream was part of the blessings showing him what the future looked like. I want us just to see the life of Joseph because I want to talk in detail about him. Number two, what we saw about the wisdom of blessings is that he had the blessings of the deep. And what were the blessings of the deep? This signified wealth. This signified gold. This signified silver. Joseph had all these things. Number three, about the blessings of the deep. We saw the blessings of the breasts. And this we saw was provision. Joseph experienced the blessings of provision. He never lacked. He had comfort and he had pleasure. Number four, there was the blessings of the womb. This was increase of children. We see Joseph had two children. And whatever he did, it was fruitful. It didn't matter wherever he was, he was fruitful. That, those are blessings of the womb. Number five, and finally, we talked about the blessings of his father. Joseph was the beloved of the father, and the father bestowed blessings upon him. This was his portion all his life, and anything fashioned against him worked for his good. So those were the five blessings that we talked about or dad taught us about three Sundays ago. And just to put this into context, I want to share a snippet of the life of Joseph and rush it through so that even as I continue, we shall be together. So as we read, if you remembered in verse 2, we see Joseph got a coat of many colors from his father when he was 17 years old. He had brothers, but he was the beloved son of his father. And the father went ahead and made him a good coat and gave it only to him. And this made his brothers not happy or hate him. After that, we see Joseph, as a result of his brothers not liking him, they planned to kill him. But when they were about to kill him, they decided, let us not kill him. Let us sell him out as a slave. So we see he sold into slavery and worked for Potiphar for 11 years. How many years? 11 years. He got a court at 17, then sold into slavery for 17 years. Remember, this is the person who is telling people, you will bow down to me. Another thing that we see, as he is in Potiphar's house, something happens. The wife of Potiphar tries to do what? To lie with Joseph. But Joseph refused to do what the wife of Potiphar wanted. And as a result, Joseph is jailed for how many years? Two years. So he was sold into slavery at 17. He served for, seven, for 11 years. 17 plus 11 is how many years? Mathematicians. 17 plus 11 is 28. At 28, he's taken into prison for how many years? Two years. So Joseph stays in prison for another two years. And then he leaves prison at the age of 30. He's leaving prison after interpreting the dream of Pharaoh. At the age of what? At the age of seven, or at the age, sorry, of 30. And there are things that we see. Joseph gets a wife and he gets two sons. And the name of the first son is Manasseh, which, may, which means making to forget. This son was making him forget the tough times that he had gone through. And then he gets a second son. And the second son is called Ephraim. And this means to be fruitful because God had continued to be with Joseph. And then Pharaoh had given Joseph a name in addition to his name. 
And the name he gave him, its interpretation meant God who speaks and lives. Because Joseph was used of God to interpret the dreams. So at the end, Joseph has a family. And I'd want to look at the wife when she was referring to the family. Now, as a wife, imagine yourself, you are calling your people by what their name means. So she's calling them for dinner. This is how it would have sounded. God who speaks and lives. That is referring to Joseph. Then when calling also Manasseh made me forget. And Ephraim, fruitful. So he calls them, God who speaks and lives, made me fruitful, made me forget, and made me fruitful, come for dinner. That is him, that is a wife calling who? The family. Indeed, Joseph had a lovely and a great family. But now let me go back to my topic and break it down. I talked about Alish. What is Alish? Alish is what is used to guide or to control a dog. You know when you have a dog and it wants to go, when it is under leash, it is confined to what it can do. For those who watch Nat National Geographic, there's somebody who's called Caesar, who does a program called Dog Whisperer. And I love watching him because I love dogs. And he trains people how to walk, how to train dogs. And when you're starting your journey of training your dog, it is, you normally keep it on a very short leash. If I am here, the dog is here. Why do you keep it on a short leash? So that you can control it. So that you can overcome it. So that you are in charge of it. With days, as the dog continues to follow your instructions, you continue to release the leash. You allow it to go further and further and further. But the release is guided by how it is responding to the release when you give it some space. If you are not careful for the first time, if you give your dog a short leash, it will go smelling everything around. It will want to go and help itself around bushes and trees. And it will slow down your movement. And as a result, it has to be kept on a short leash. So when it comes to blessings, are you on a short leash? Has God kept you or put you under a short leash? Do you give God the chance or the ability to give you more and more food under the leash? This can only happen guided by how you behave when God is blessing and guiding you. If you are reckless with your blessings, then just like the doggy for hours, God, I will pull you closer and give you less space to operate under. Why? Because you are not behaving well with the space that I have given you. And I don't want to ask, when God blesses you with money, how do you behave with that money? When God puts you in a place of authority, how do you carry out yourself? I remember when we were growing up, we used to have a TV. And we used to be told, you should not watch that TV until you are done with homework. After homework, you have to shower. After showering, you have to eat. Then that is when you can just watch TV just for a small moment. But as children, we'd switch it on, watch our cartoons, and I want to blame the channels that used to be there then. They used to ensure that cartoons come between four and six. The time that we should not be watching TV. Then the time we should watch TV from seven, there is news, and there were some other programs, weekly review, and some other things that were not interesting to us. So we'd watch it, and then when we hear our parents are the gate, we would switch it off. And then my dad would come and find us there, very busy doing our homework. 
And you know, unlike the TVs of today, those TVs had a very big extension at the back. And so he'd go and just place his arm at the back. And you know what he would figure out? These people have been doing what? Have been watching TV. So it happened that the TV broke down. And we kept asking him, Dad, will you buy us a new TV? Will you buy us a new TV? And he'd tell us, you know what? When I told you not to watch TV, you used to watch it against my instructions. Now, we shall stay like that until all of you get to high school. That is when you will watch TV again. He kept us under a short leash because we could not manage the freedom that we had. Did he have the money to buy us a new TV? Yes. But did he buy us a TV? No. Because we did not carry ourselves right when we had plenty or when we had things around us. So my question, and remember today we are looking at the journey to our blessings. Are you causing God to put you under a short leash? I hope you are not. That is determined by how you are behaving. So as we see here, don't be surprised if you find it difficult to make sense of your experience just like Joseph. Joseph was in a scenario that he could not understand. He had seen and had a vision. But when we looked at the things around him, they were not adding up to the dream, to the vision, to what he had seen. But I want to tell you, the promises of God are yea and amen. He releases the blessings, but there is a season or there is a process that you have to go through before you get to your season of breakthrough, before you get to your blessing. If this dog that is under leash refuses to walk in future because it has been kept under a short leash, will it ever experience even the freedom of being let loose from the leash? It will never. Do not be clouded by what is happening now that you lose your vision. Do not be clouded by the problems or the challenges that may come your way. I want just to share with us four steps on how to prepare ourselves or how to position ourselves for God's blessings. Number one is have a dream or a vision and a compelling desire to see it fulfilled. Excuse me. Have a dream or a vision and a compelling desire to see it what? To see it fulfilled. In life, if you aim for nothing, I can assure you, you will hit it. If you aim or target for nothing, you will always hit it. However, you need to have a vision or a mission that you are working towards if you want to partake of your blessings. When we look at the life of Joseph, he got his vision or he got his dream when he was 17 years of age. He dreamt about it. And this dream kept him going and put him on focus all the days of his life. You are created for a divine reason, for a divine purpose. And if you are to achieve your blessings, you need to find that which has God has called you for. You need to find out that which God has prepared for you. You need to know and seek the face of the Lord to know that which God has kept in store for you. The importance of this is because as a Christian, you will go through hard times. You will go through tribulations. 
You will go through things and the people you expect to support you will fail you. But if you don't have a vision, you will cut short the journey. You will stop doing that which you need to do to get to your destination. We see in Ephesians 5.17, it says, Therefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. The first step to get to your blessing is to know the will of the Lord in your life. Is to know what the Lord has called you to do. Not only will your vision bring fulfillment, it will keep you on track. When things come and cloud you, you will remember, I have seen people are bowing down to me. I have seen this is happening. The Lord has told me I'll be a mighty man. The Lord has told me I'll be a mighty woman. The Lord has shown me I will be a leader. The Lord has shown me I will own houses. The Lord has shown me I will be a pastor. When you have such a vision, you will pursue it. Regardless of whatever happens, you will do what? You will pursue it. As a church, last year, it was our season of establishment. But things happened that seemed to cloud our establishment. But did we give up? Did we faint? Why? Because we had what? A vision. We had to be what? We had to be established. Even when our tent was brought down, we still kept our focus. We still kept our faith. We continued to pray. We continued to look. And lo and behold, we are established here. And we thank the Lord for that. Amen. The same will happen to you. If you have your vision right, don't let anything cloud you. Don't let anything cause you to be discouraged. I'll tell you for free, challenges will come. Situations will come. But the vision will keep you focused. The vision will keep you going. The vision will propel you. The vision will take you to your destiny. Proverbs 29, 18 says, Where there is no vision, the people cast off restraints. Be reminded, even as you have a vision, remember that you're still on earth. There are people who will not be happy with your vision. Not everybody is happy when you share your dreams with them. Joseph shared his dream. And he shared it out of excitement and night. And being naive. But his brothers, his father, they were not happy. But all the same, he did what? He shared the vision. At times, you need to keep sharing the vision. Whether people want to hear it or not. You need to keep saying, I am blessed. You need to keep saying, I am blessed. I am blessed. I am blessed. Even if it is not showing, keep saying, I am blessed. If you are believing God for a spouse, you need to say, I am married in the name of Jesus. Whether they are there or not. If you are believing God for children, you keep need to say, I am a father, I am a father, I am a parent. Whether they are there or not. If you've gone through the pastors from the pews, you need to keep saying, I have a mega church. Whether we see the church or... Pastors from the pews, can we say, I have a mega? Yes. Some people are not saying, and I know they've been through that class. Pastors from the pews, can you say that again? I have a mega? You need to keep declaring. Whether it is showing it or not. I want us to open Genesis 39 verse 2. I want us to read it together if it can be put up. Genesis 39 verse 2. The Lord was with Joseph. And he was a successful man. And he was in the house 
of his master, the Egyptian. Now, Joseph is called successful, yet he is a slave. I want us to connect those two things. Joseph is a slave in this house. But it is said he was a successful man. Despite the circumstance, despite the situation, he was a successful man. He was a prosperous man. Yet he was what? A slave. What made him successful? He clung to that word that the Lord gave him. And did what he had to do. True prosperity is knowing God is with you regardless of what you are going through. True prosperity is knowing that God will walk you through the sea with you. He'll go with you through the season. He'll hold your hand. He will ensure that you come out successful until you see that vision coming to be. That is prosperity. That is success. Do not faint in the journey. Do not faint when you're in the valley. But, as, is it Rod Canoli who sang a song? If you go through hell, don't do what? You don't stop. You go ahead, you go ahead, you go ahead, you go ahead, you go ahead. You keep doing what? You go ahead, you go ahead, you go ahead, you go ahead, you go ahead. Until you see your vision coming to be. Remember, it is your vision. It is not a vision for everybody. It is yours. Those discouraging you, they'll discourage you because it is not their vision. They will not see what you are seeing. It is about you and God. And God never gives up on us. So let us not be the ones who are giving up on God. If you want to be blessed... If you want to enjoy your blessings, walk in your vision. Walk in your dreams. Walk in your purposes. Walk in your calling. Deuteronomy 8.18 says, Thou shalt remember the Lord your God, for it is he that giveth thee the power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant with you. It is not men who will establish you. It is God. If you put your hope in man, they will fail you. I will tell you for free. They will fail you. But God will never fail you. God will never leave you. God will never disappoint you. God has you in mind. He's taking you where he has shown you. He doesn't tell you so that he can leave you. He shows you or he tells you or he puts that desire so that you can keep going. So that you can keep walking. So that you can go through the valley. Joseph had the image of the final picture. He had the image of people bowing down to him. And that pushed him. That elevated him. And that made him to keep moving on. Begin to see yourself as God sees you. Most of us don't see ourselves as God sees us. Have you ever seen somebody and you tell them, you look smart, you're doing well. And they ask, really? Are you playing with my mind? But you're telling them out of honesty because they're actually smart. But they are not seeing it themselves. God is seeing a good picture about you. Are you seeing it about yourself? Can you see it? You need to see it. You need to visualize it. And once you do that, you will be able to run. It's tempting to give up, but keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Joseph would have decided, I'm tired of working here. I'm seeing myself as a king, yet here I am what? I am a slave. 
But be encouraged by Galatians 6, 9, which says, And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap. If we faint, if you do not faint, you will reap a harvest. If you do not faint, you will walk into your blessing. Joseph did not faint. And at the end of 30 years, he walked into his blessing. After those many years, he walked into his blessing. So, urge the person next to you, have a vision and a dream. And have something compelling to see it coming to pass. You need to have a desire. You need to have a yearning. You need to feel it within you that it has to do what? It has to happen. Amen? Point number two. Prepare for the blessing. Prepare for the blessing. When we look at nature and you look like th things like birds. Have you ever seen a bird when even before it gets a meat? What does the male bird start doing? It needs to do some dances to show its feathers, to go around until the female feels that this male is ready to be the one that we shall have chicks or children with. Then what happens? After that, the female bird comes on board. There are two categories of birds. There are those birds where the male is left to build the nest. You build and then you bring the female bird to come see the nest. And if she likes the nest, then she will be mated and she will lay her eggs there. There are those birds, once they agree that this is their partner, they come together and they build their nest. In readiness for what? For the chicks that are coming. These are birds. But they prepare themselves for the blessing that is ahead. Let's leave the birds. Let's come to human beings. When you're expecting a blessing, let's, let, which one? let me use the blessing of a baby. Do you wait until you hear, yeah, the baby has been born? There are steps you do. There are things you do to prepare for the baby. I've seen people even paint the house. Even they want to find out, is this a boy or a girl? If it's a boy, they go ahead and paint the room blue. If it is a girl, they do what they paint it? Pink. They go ahead and start buying pampas. Things for expressing milk. All these kinds of things. Why are they doing it? They're doing what? They are preparing for a blessing. Have they seen the child yet? But they are doing what? They are preparing for the blessing. Now I want to ask us. When we tell God to bless us, do we prepare ourselves for that blessing? Or do we wait for the blessing just to fall on us? You need to prepare yourself for your blessings. And I want to see how Joseph prepared himself for the blessing that was about to come. In James 2, 1 and 17, it says, Faith without works is dead. There is work for us to do before the blessing comes our way. When we look at the Bible, there are several miracles that Jesus did. He performed the blessing or the miracle, but there was work on the part of those who were to partake. You are the person who is partaking the blessing that is coming. So I want you to see a few examples. In John 2, 7, where Jesus was about to turn water into wine, he told the people, or the people were commanded to fill those vessels with water. There was work for them to do before the blessing could come. We see Naaman who had leprosy. After he was told he's well, he was told to go and wash how many times? Seven. There was work for him to do. Then we see there was a widow in the time of Elisha. After the husband died, and she said, my children are about to be taken away. And then the prophet told her, go and collect vessels and fill all of them with oil that you may sell and pay off your debtors. What are we seeing? 
there is work for us to do. We have to prepare ourselves. We have to create room for blessings. If you are believing God for a car, you need first and foremost to do what? To have a driver's license. It shows you are prepared. If you are believing God for a spouse, you need to be lovable. You need first to prepare yourself. You need to be lovable. If you are believing God for a house, you need to prepare knowing houses are not free. There are things or due diligence that you need to do. So if you need a blessing, you need to prepare yourself for this blessing. And this is what Joseph did. Joseph was coming from a foreign land. First, he could not speak the language of where he was. So Joseph had to learn a new language because when you are ruler over many, you have to communicate with them in the language they understand. Have you seen our politicians when they are talking to us? They prefer talking Swahili. Why? They want to relate. They want to connect with you. I will not mention names, but there are those who find it difficult. And when you make your speeches in English, do people connect with you really? When you are talking to the masses, there is one person and I will not mention their names. Once they connect with the language of the people, they can make you pick stones and put them together. I'm, I'm not saying you throw them. You, and put them together for a good cause. So Joseph had to learn the language. How was he learning the language? He was learning by interacting with the Egyptians day by day. He was a slave. He was working day by day. And this was his preparation field. This was his school. Those days there was no online courses. He learned while he was doing the work. Also we see Joseph was in charge of many things. When you're in charge, you need to know how to do mathematics and how to balance books. Otherwise, whatever you have, if you cannot plan for it to last till when you intend for it, you will abuse or expense in a way that is not acceptable. And that's why in your organizations, you will find you have accountants. They will tell you, we cannot do this because of A, B, C, D. There is tomorrow. There is eight months. There is this to be done. But Joseph, at 17, he was not ready for that. The day he dreamt, if he was made king at that time, he would have failed miserably. He had to go through a process of doing what? Preparation. He had to serve as he prepares himself. And this preparation happened as he was working. What does this tell us? The work you are doing currently is important to you and to God. You are being prepared for what is ahead. There are those people who say, even I don't like my work. Now imagine, you don't like what you are doing and it is your preparation field. You need to change your attitude. Did Joseph enjoy being a slave? No. No. But his attitude towards work was great. He had a positive attitude. And as he continued working, the Lord was preparing. As he continued working, the Lord was preparing him. And it happened that whenever Potiphar wanted anything done, he was like, this is the man I will choose. This is the man I will put in charge of my house. But how was he noticed? While he was working. If you are believing God for blessings, you need to be working. You need to be doing something. You can't be praying and sleeping. No, it doesn't work like that. You need to work. The Lord blesses the works of your hands. Work. Don't be lazy. Work, work, work. God blesses the work of your hands. 
it is not just about prayers. It is about doing what? Working. If you want to be blessed, work hard. If you have a business, work hard in it and God will increase it. If it is in your office, work hard. Sasa natusidanga nyane. How many of you here, your bosses would say, like Potiphar said of Joseph, that this is a good worker. I will entrust him with all, everything. The only thing Joseph was not entrusted with was the wife of Potiphar. Everything else. Are we the kind of people when the boss goes for leave? You say now, paka wakitoka, panya wanatawala. Are we those kind of people? I want us to be people who work as unto the Lord. Don't work as unto man. Work as unto who? As unto the Lord. And as you do it, the Lord will bless you. The Lord will use different kinds of people to bring the blessing. But you need to be doing something. Joseph would have said, I didn't come into this land to be a slave. I believe I'm seeing myself as king. But Joseph put that on the side and he prepared himself. He continued working as a slave. How many years? 11 years. He kept working. He kept working. He kept working. Yes, it was miserable, but he kept working. He did not steal. The wife of Potiphar tells him, oh, come and lie with me. Get a shortcut to whatever you have seen. But Joseph refused and said, no, I cannot do this sin against who? Against God. Work as unto the Lord. Are you loyal? Are you dependable? Are you reliable? Can people count on you? People need to count on you first before they can entrust things or blessings with you. Before you are promoted, you need to do something. If you are believing God for a job, you need to apply for it. Not just sitting down and saying, I'm praying for a job. No. Apply. Put a CV together. When you go for that interview, prepare and rehearse. If you are believing God for something, there is something you need to do. You need to prepare yourself for it. Opportunity, when it meets the prepared, something great happens. Joseph was prepared when the opportunity presented himself. He didn't go to school when he was made king. No. He had already done his homework. So arise and prepare yourself. Do what needs to be done. Prepare yourself for your blessings so that when the blessings come your way, you will be found acceptable. Joseph had found favor with God first. After finding God with favor, he found favor with Potiphar because of his loyalty. Are you loyal where you are? Personally, I cannot entrust blessings or responsibilities if I cannot entrust you. Maybe that is what is standing between you and the blessing that is ahead of you. Maybe your boss cannot promote you because you are not loyal. Because you are not dependable. Make yourself dependable. Make yourself loyal. So that it can be said, well done, good and faithful servant. The person who was given five talents and multiplied them, more was added unto them. The one who hid his one talent, it was taken away from him. Work that which you have. Work. Work yourself. Prepare yourself. And even as you do it, the Lord will bless you and get ready for your blessings. Amen? Point number three. Sorry, before I go to that, you know I like giving examples. Pastor Dan gives illustrations. May I give examples? Dad is believing that we shall be a mega church. Are you seeing steps of preparation towards that? 
Are you seeing steps towards leadership for that? Like now we are happy and we are celebrating him. He has put a feather on his title. Now he is doctor. Like Joseph, he did what? He studied in secret. He is reading. He is doing curriculums. He is churning out materials. There are classes to prepare us for the mega church. The question is, are you attending those classes? Are you preparing yourselves? When you are called upon, do you come for those classes? It is part of what? Of preparation. Let us do what? Let us prepare ourselves. Point number three. Where, I, where has my time gone to? Oh my God. Number three. Allow the Lord to mold you. Allow the Lord to mold you. Allow the, mold, allow the Lord to mold you or endure the process. Now, in our, where I work, we have a gym. And before you enter, there is a very big sign they have put there. And it says, no pain, no gain. And at times when you want to open that door, you ask, now, why are these people telling me about pain when I am outside? They should just wait for me to be inside. Then they welcome us. They tell us we'll have a good time here. Then we meet the pain. But they are true to their word. They tell you what you are going to find inside. They say that where there is no pain, there is no gain. I want to assure us, as we prepare ourselves for God's blessings, we need to be ready to go through the process. Gold or diamond is not just picked and placed on a shop. No. It goes through a very rigorous heating process. To get bronze, the amount of heat you require is different from the heat you require to get silver. To get gold, the heat has to be made even hotter to remove gold from it. To get platinum, the heat needs to go even higher. What does this mean? The more precious the stone, the more it is put under stress and under duress. If you are destined for a great blessing, you need to be ready to go through difficult and hard times. Some might come easily, but be warned. Whatever comes easy, goes easy. You will not cherish it. You will not value it. But something you have worked hard for, you will value. You will protect it. It's like a new car. Have you seen somebody with a new car? They secure the wheels. They put things to ensure the side mirrors are not stolen. It is cleaned every other day. Why? Because it is precious. But if I've had my car for 20 years, even at times you forget to lock it. You just close the door and you, and you walk away. Why? You've had it over time. So if you are getting ready for a great blessing, you need to be ready for a great process. So with that in mind, how many of us want a great blessing? We have lifted our hands. So what is a precipitate? There is what? A process. Are you ready for this rigorous process? Trials will come your way. I'm telling you, Joseph went through a process. It was a difficult process. But he knew the blessing that was ahead. So he kept pushing on. And he knew this will take me to where I need to be. Even in church, you will face processes. People you expect to help you in your journey will be the ones who are pulling you backwards. People will backbite you. Somebody might steal your boyfriend or your girlfriend in church. Process! Huh? 
I will be expecting you to come for my wedding committee and then you fail me. Process. I invited you for dinner. Or I asked you out as my girlfriend and you told me no. Process. Do you give up? And say now from today I will never propose to anybody else. That is foolishness. That is what? Foolishness. If you try a business and it fails, do you will say, I will never again try business? No. You try again. It is part of the what? Process. When people disappoint you in church, are you among the people who say, I've taken my bags and my belongings and I have done what? I have left. Foolishness. Process. You need to endure the what? The process. If you are to get to your blessing, the faint-hearted will not make it. They will not. It is a what? It is a process. Joseph did not give up for 13 years. The process was going on, but he kept on. Things might not be visible up here. When you go to the farm and you put your seeds, you keep watering, you put fertilizer, but you plant after two days, you come you and ask the seed and is the seed still there? Oh, it's there. I cover it. Then I water it again. After a week, I come again. I uncover it. Ah, it's still there. Then I water it. Do we do that? You believe that something is happening and you keep doing your part. You believe God is preparing you and you keep doing your part. You keep praying. You keep worshipping. You keep doing that which you've been called to do. Knowing that something is happening. Whether we see it or not. We could not see it in the life of Joseph. Nothing in his life said he was going to be king. But he kept on. He endured the process. He pushed until the time for the fruit to be seen came to be. Will you give up along the way? We're in a process of building. It is not easy. We are raising funds. We have several millions. But will he endure the process with us? Shall we walk the journey? We are opening churches. It is not easy. Are you ready to be sent? It is not easy to be a senior pastor. You see these many numbers. Are you seeing these many numbers? Don't be deceived when you start your church. Day one, people will be like this. Don't be deceived. I remember in the other place, we were like 17. But the process... And the fruit is evident. Are you ready to go through the process? Will you endure? Proverbs 3, 5, 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do. And he will show you the path that you are to take. Let the Lord lead you in the paths. As long as you put your hope and trust in him, he will show you where you need to be. And as I close that point, there's a quote here I want to give by Martin Lloyd, which says, the worst thing that can happen to a man is that he should succeed before he is ready. The worst thing that could happen to a man is you succeed before you are ready. Have you seen successful people going down the drain? When you're not ready, Success will bring you down. My last point and point number four. Put your hope in God. Excuse me. Put your hope. Put your hope in God. When you look at the life of Joseph, the first time he interpreted the dream of the cup bearer of the king, and he asked them, once 
You go out there. Please do what? Remember me. Mention my name. When the calf bearer was released, two years, he forgot about Joseph. Two good years. But Joseph, he put his faith in who? In God. That enabled him to go through prison. As you are believing God for your blessings, where have you put your hope? Is your hope in man? Is your hope in your Godfather? Is your hope in your boss? Is your hope in your uncle? Is your hope maybe in the president? The person who will never let you down is God. And let me tell you the importance of having your hope in God. Imagine if the person who was released from prison remembered Joseph and put a good word and he was released. It would have denied Joseph the opportunity to meet the king two years later after the dream. Imagine if he just believed that only this man will get me out. And if Joseph left prison earlier, would he have become ruler in Egypt? Because maybe he'd have finished and gone back to his father. And he'd be nowhere to interpret the dream of Pharaoh. But Joseph, despite everything, he kept his faith in God. He was loyal to God. He did not murmur. He did not grumble. He continued looking under, to the Lord knowing that the dream you gave unto me, it shall surely do what? Come to pass. The dream might seem big. The dream might seem impossible. The blessing might not make sense to anybody. But believe in God. Believe in God. Even when things are not showing, keep your faith in God. I look at this place. Where is this place? When we started looking for land, I'll tell you, the people selling this place to us are not believers. They are not believers. And I'm not a judge. I cannot say some people are further from God from others. I'm saying they are not believers. They are even of a different religion. But the moment they wanted to sell this place, even before we knew it was there, they said they want to sell it to a church. They didn't say which church. But they said they want to sell it to what? To a church. They didn't know. Us on the other side, we are praying and asking God to do what? To give us land. And if you don't believe me, the first portion there, we have a church, true or false? They bought it from the same person who is of a different religion. But they are selling this to the church. What am I trying to say? Once you put your hope and your trust in God, God will use people to bring your blessing to you. God will use what? People. To them, it sounded maybe foolish. God used this cup bearer two years later to ensure that Joseph came into the presence of the king. The same God, because Joseph put his hope in him, gave the king of Pharaoh a dream. And he knew the person to interpret it is who? Is Joseph. So wherever you are, if you are seeking promotion, put your hope in who? God. God is able to use your boss to promote you. Put your hope in God. He will never leave you. He will never disappoint you. He came through for who? He came through for Joseph. And the same God 
will come through for you. Amen? Finally, this is not a point. This is in the bakshish in our patia. Joseph finally was blessed. And I believe the Lord will bless you. The Lord will bless you. The Lord will bless you. Question is, how do you behave when your blessing comes? How do you behave? When Joseph was made king and ruler, it took nine years for his brothers to come and bow down before him. Nine good years. But why was he able to persevere that? He had gone through the process. He had been refined. He was ready for success. That is why those steps are very important. Joseph would have decided, I will go back to Canaan and make my brothers and father bow down before me. I will make it come to pass. He did not. He waited. And sure enough, they came and they bowed before him. Willingly. Without him coercing anybody to do it. So we are seeing 11 years as a slave. Two years in prison. That is 13. And then nine years before they came to bow down. That is 20, 22. Now some of us we pray and a blessing takes two days to come and we give up. Have we been prepared right that we can wait for 22 years for the blessing that the Lord has shown you to pass in your life? Be ready to go through the process. And the harder the process, the greater the blessing. May the Lord bless you. I'll ask us to stand on our feet.